Hello, I'm Craig I. I'm Director of Communications here at the Maryland Insurance Administration. It's my great pleasure to be here in this afternoon with Maryland Insurance C Commissioner Al Bremer, Jr. A key part of our mission is making sure the public is well informed about insurance in Maryland. That's why we decided to put some of your questions live on Facebook. Al, can you, uh, before we begin and we get into the questions, please take a few minutes to explain what the MIA does, what the MIA, what the MIA is and what it does. Sure, happy, happy to do that and, and good afternoon and thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, the Maryland Insurance Administration is the state agency that is responsible for protecting all of Maryland citizens regarding their interaction uh, with insurance and we do that uh, in a number of, uh, number of ways. Uh, however, I'm always fond of pointing out that basically an insurance company can do whatever they want, right. whenever they want to do it, and why ever they want to do it as long as they don't violate the terms of the policy that they've provided us or they don't violate a law or a regulation. So mm -hmm. our responsibility is to enforce the law, make sure that all of the insurance carriers and producers are uh, are playing by the appropriate rules and taking sure. action when they don't. So if you have questions or concerns about your insurance, we're the resource in the state of Maryland. Absolutely. So a couple weeks ago, we had some bad storms and tornadoes here in Maryland. Um, they damaged <clears throat> homes, automobiles, and businesses. Also, we had a lot of rain for these last couple of weeks. And spring generally brings even more rain to Maryland. Let's start with a few of the questions. Uh, based around storms, and sure. rain, and those kinds of things. So during those recent storms, homeowners had a lot of tree damage. And can you spend a few minutes kind of talking about tree damage and what the coverage is and how it works? Sure. And as a matter of fact, I mean, this, this is a reminder for all of us. We just had recent tornadoes hit in, uh, in Baltimore. I think we had two or three in the last yeah. uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, and generally, and, and most po folks don't understand this. First, with, with any kind of insurance, it's always important to read your policy and know what's covered and not covered. Right. Uh, when in doubt, meet with that trusted advisor who can help you identify um, your coverages and, and again, what's covered and what's not covered. But, but generally, if a, a tree falls on your property, uh, the removal uh, will be paid for by the insurance company and, and typically it's about $500, but it's important to note even if it's your neighbor's uh, tree that falls on your property, right. it's your insurance that's going to pay for the removal. I except if you can demonstrate that your neighbor knew that the tree was dead and at risk of falling, then, uh, then the, story, the, the yeah. liability yeah. may go to your neighbor. But uh, in most instances, if it falls in your yard, um, it's your policy that's going to pay. And it's important to note that the, the $500, as an example, mm -hmm. it, it's not per tree, it's per incident. So if you have Interesting. 10 okay. trees go over, it, it's the same uh, same $500. So it's if important to know If it's all in the same that. storm. Right. That's exactly yeah, right. right. That's right. exactly right. The other area that many <clears throat> consumers have questions about is whether the water damage to their home is covered um, you know, under their homeowner's policy. Um, what should they know about that? Well, and, and, and this is, again, another reminder um, that we need to know how this stuff works, and it's important to uh, meet with that trusted advisor who can help you identify your risk, quantify your risk, and make informed decisions about what to do about that risk. So if, uh, if water flows from the outside of your house mm -hmm. to the inside of your house, typically it's not going to be covered you would need to have a separate flood insurance policy uh, to take care of that. And, uh, you know, most people think that you need to have a hurricane yeah. uh, or maybe you have to live along the banks of a river or a stream to sustain flooding damage. Not necessarily so. Yeah. That's not the case. Uh, right, we yeah. have seen significant flooding in the last couple of years. Uh, in Ellicott City, as an example, we had 100-year uh, uh, floods that occurred twice in, in a, a couple of years. Right. We've had um, recent flooding just a couple of months ago in uh, East Baltimore, uh, two years ago in Catonsville and in Frederick. So we see flooding generally, and these are folks that, that don't live anywhere near the water, but right. because of the significant amounts of rainfall and other phenomenon, 
uh, we've seen a lot of flooding incidents. And again, typically, Absolutely. you need a separate flood insurance policy to take care of that. Now, if, uh, if the flooding occurs from the inside, um, you know, through your pipes and toilet and so on, uh, with your homeowner's policy, you can have coverage if you have uh, purchased uh, a water uh, backup coverage. So you should make sure you have that. You have to make yeah. sure that you have it or it's, it's not it's covered. And again, right. that's why you need to meet with that trusted advisor sure. and uh, to make sure that you have it. And we see too often where folks don't have it. Uh, and we see too often where folks have it, but they only have maybe $5,000 worth of coverage. Right. And to clean up a, an internal sewage spill, mm -hmm. uh, water coming out of the toilet well, can run yeah. 10, 20, $30,000. So Absolutely. it can be a significant cost that folks just don't, uh, don't anticipate. There's no question. So in general, before a disaster strikes, what do you tell consumers? What, what should they be looking out for? Well, in, in, in risk of repeating myself, I'll yeah. repeat my, uh, <laughs> myself. <laughs> and, and that's it. I, I meet with that trusted advisor yeah. to identify your risk, uh, quantify it, and make informed decisions about that, uh, about that risk. Sure. And, and part of that can be, when you identify the risk, there might be a way to eliminate or um, at least uh, mitigate or eliminate uh, the risk. So as an example, if it's hurricane season, uh, or you're subject to uh, heavy winds, and you have, uh, you have things outside of your property mm -hmm. that could end up being a missile yeah. based on a 50 or 80 mile an hour wind, you might want to bring it inside uh, as Absolutely. an example. Yes. Uh, it's also a reminder that when, you, uh, when anybody has a claim, part of the claim process is you have to submit a, a claim to the insurance company and document the property that you lost. Right. So you have to make an itemized list of those things that you owned and were lost. Maybe take a video uh, or something like that. Well, exactly. You, you know, yeah. if, if you lost it because of flooding, yeah. you see um, the uh, furniture that you lost. But right. if you lost it in a fire or in a tornado, sure. as an example, uh, will you really remember all of the personal property that you own. So it's important that you take a, a personal inventory so that you have it before disaster strikes. So whether you make a list of everything you have or you can uh, um, uh, walk around your home and, and take a video, just open up the drawers, take yeah. videos and, uh, and capture images of all of the property that you own. And then naturally, you wanna make sure that you keep that information in a safe place. That's good advice. Uh, uh, important papers you keep in a safe place so that you don't lose it when uh, when disaster strikes right okay and switching gears and no pun intended let's talk about <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk car insurance <clears throat> a lot of comments about car insurance for example we often hear why do people have to pay more in the city than in the county let's say that's um, a you know. that's a great question uh do you have any more good questions <laughs> <laughs> so so uh yeah it's pretty easy um yeah. Insurance companies, when they determine the rates, r regardless of what that product is, whether it's life insurance or auto or health insurance, right. they, they base the rates in part on what's the likelihood that there's going to be a claim uh, that's referred to as frequency, mm -hmm. and, and what's the amount of claims that we're likely to get, and that's the severity. And, um, you know, common sense tells you that if you live in the city, you live in a more urban area, sure. um, you're likely to have more accidents but just because of all of the additional traffic, traffic sure. as opposed to if you live in Hereford of Northern Baltimore County or Caroline County or someplace which is more uh, rural. Right. Now, one of the things that we do uh, at the Insurance Administration based on state law mm -hmm. is we review the rates that insurance carriers uh, charge. And the standards that we have to use in approving rates or not is that first, the insurance rates have to be actuarially justified. They have to uh, provide us the data that demonstrates they need the premiums that they want to charge. Uh, the rates cannot be excessive, so we cannot allow a carrier to charge too much right. based on the expenses of operating that business. But the rates can also not be inadequate. We cannot knowingly allow a carrier to charge too little right. for fear that they would go into financial distress 
uh, which would impede their ability to pay the claims when they come. And most importantly, uh, the rates cannot be unfairly discriminatory, right. uh, which means they can be fairly discriminatory. <laughs> right, so you can right. discriminate, but it has to be fairly. So, right. <clears throat> as so a teenager has to pay more. Absolutely. A teenager is going to be pay right. more uh, because uh, uh, than, a, than someone more experienced. Right. Because they're inexperienced sure. and more likely to have an accident, they may drive a little faster, uh, et cetera. Uh, and same is also true with like life insurance. If, if uh, I'm older than you, I'm going to pay more because there's an increased likelihood that I'll die before uh, before you. Sure. Uh, so yeah, those we, we review those rates and um, we all know the common things that, that carriers look at in determining rates and, and that's the age, the location of where uh, where you are. Again, the city is going to be more expensive than the, than the county. Uh, they're going to look at our driving record. Sure. Uh, if you have a poor driving record, you're you're going to pay more than uh, than if you don't. And same way with the type of car that you own. If you uh, have a more expensive car and it's damaged or totaled, obviously it's going to cost more to replace it. So the insurance is going to be, it's going to be more a higher. Sure. Yeah. And, and again, um, the loss, the 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 uh, the basic rule is a carrier can charge uh, uh, modify the rate based on any reason they want, as long as it's actuarially justified right. and it doesn't violate any provision of law. It has to be based on that data. That's yeah, exactly right. Absolutely. That's exactly absolutely. right. Absolutely. So let's talk about something that isn't in the news much, health insurance. No, mm -hmm. no I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how, did, how, can the MIA, how can the MIA help with health insurance claims? Sure. You know, so we get uh, between health insurance and the and the property auto homeowner side, we we get thousands and thousands of complaints uh, a year. Uh, we have a talented team of investigators mm -hmm. that investigate each and every claim. And again, the the standard is: Did an insurance company violate the terms of the contract? Did they violate a law or a regulation? At the right. end of the day, if if they haven't violated those things, they're free to do what they propose to do. Uh, if they did violate it, we have tools uh, at our disposal. Uh, so the health insurance uh, complaints that we get are all across the board. It's important to note, though, is that if it's an emergency situation where uh, care is being denied uh, and they come to us with a complaint, we have a team of professionals that, that literally are on call 24-7, 365 days wow. uh, yeah. a year. And uh, if we determine that care should be delivered based on the process and the expertise that we have in place, uh, we can we can make uh, uh, make those claims uh, be covered. Right, right, absolutely. Well, would you, we're getting close to our time, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, this product. Now, you work through the National Association of Insurance commissioners mm -hmm. to uh, um, in various ways but, but they have a great product um, is to help people locate life insurance policies if there has been a death in the family can yeah. you take a few minutes uh, to, to explain the policy you, you know it, it is such a a simple but yet important uh, thing uh, that the NAIC has helped with first the the NAIC is the National Association of Insurance Commissioners uh, this is a national uh, organization made up of insurance departments like ours that uh, work, uh, collaborate on a regular basis in an effort to uh, find best practices, create standards around the country, uh, et cetera. And, and this life insurance issue is a significant issue yeah. because we all know uh, that in every industry, and, and including the insurance industry, there have been all kinds of mergers and acquisitions Absolutely. over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So, uh, you know, somebody that may have had insurance bought for them as a child mm -hmm. uh, dies when they're 80 years of age. Well, right. that insurance, the original insurance company may have been bought or sold right. 10 times. And that name is long since gone. That, the yeah, the yeah, name right, yeah. is long yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, uh, the NEIC, the National Association, has a website it's naic.org. It's called a policy locator. And uh, so anybody can go online, provide the information of the, decedent, uh, the deceased, 
and, uh, and they will send that information to all of the different insurance companies in an attempt to lost the policy, to locate a policy that may have been lost or misplaced. Yeah, that's a great service. Um, so, Al, so our viewers may, have, may want to know more information. Uh, you know, obviously, you've given us a lot of uh, great stuff about car insurance, mm -hmm. about health insurance. Um, so where do they go? How do they find this So first, if, if you haven't done it already, uh, like us on Facebook Absolutely. and follow us on social media because, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, we provide a lot of information and, and when disaster is about to strike, we provide information in real time mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, as it develops. Um, we also have a, a team that's devoted to consumer education and advocacy. Uh, our folks are out in the community providing information to consumers last year over 500 times. Wow. We were in communities all over, uh, all over the state. And uh, all of the information that we disseminate we have available on our website, which is uh, insurance.maryland, you need to spell out the word Maryland, uh, .gov. Mm -hmm. So it's insurance.maryland.gov. I invite folks to uh, go on there look at all of the useful information that we have, and, and it's all designed in an effort to make folks more knowledgeable and educated about the, uh, the business and the products uh, of insurance. Absolutely, and there's some commentary from you. That's exactly right, yeah, uh, thanks to you. We uh, just started the Commissioner's Corner, right. uh, which provides uh, commentary, information, and editorial comment in the, in the event I ever get an opinion. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's great, and, and we hope to provide a lot of useful information there. Great. Any parting thoughts? No, I just want to thank folks for uh, for joining us for a few minutes. Uh, you know, inf uh, insurance is is not sexy, uh, but it is important. Absolutely. And uh, it is important. like anything else in life. The the better educated we can be as consumers, the better decisions that we're, we'll make. And uh, you know, if if you don't make a decision that is a decision that you have to live with in and of your in, in and of itself so it's important that you again uh, meet with that trusted advisor uh, identify your risk quantify it and make informed decisions before the claim about what to do with it right absolutely al remmer thank you so much <laughs> thank you appreciate it thanks for joining us